Hi, this is a follow-up to the RA SCSI video I did a little while ago. Uh, at that stage it wasn't working with VMS systems. But thanks to the hard work of the RA SCSI community, uh, there's a new release just came out a few days ago and all those problems are fixed and it works great in the VAX and the Alpha now. Plus there's a whole lot of new features that they've added as well. So today we're going to go through some of those changes and have a look on the fax station and the alpha. Okay, this is the web page for the RA SCSI. Um, this is the, showing the currently connected images. And this section shows the images that I've currently got on the SD card. So I've mostly got some ISOs here and various bits and pieces. This is one of the images I'm using on the VAC station. So if we want to connect that to ID 0, we select 0 there and say attach. And then you'll see that the SCSI hard drive has attached there and it's emulating an RZ24. other options down here. There's some Ethernet stuff for the Macs. Upload files, so you can put files, load files up into this section here. So I've you know, moved various ISOs and things up there using that. You can put images from the URL up onto the thing as well. This section lets you create an image file. So if I create one called test and say 100 megabytes, say create, then I've now got a test disk 100 megabytes and I can play around with that and attach it. So it comes up on SCSI ID 2, attach, delete it. Now that just creates a generic SCSI drive. Uh, down here you can go create name drives and it will create a drive but with certain properties that match um, known hard drives. And there's been some extra work here to put in some of the deck stuff. So if you want an RZ26, you just gotta go along here and say create. And I've now got an RZ26. Um, this arrow here, if you click on that, it'll tell you what the settings are. So it'll come up with a deck vendor string and the RZ26 name and the block size. Um, and so that this will be an exact match for the RZ26 in terms of size and the, what it returns to the operating system. So if I wanted to attach that to 3, you just go attach and there it is. One of the new features is support for zip files. So what I've done is I've created this zip called vaxvms.zip and if I click down that it shows me the contents of the file and I've got all my ISOs for the various versions installers. So I can have seven ISOs there packed down into 800 meg which is pretty good. So if you want one of these you can just say unzip and that will unpack that file. There is our file. Now by default this will just attach as a generic CD with a 2048 byte sector size. Now for VMS systems the sector size is 512 for CDs. So what you can do is you go down into this section about the name drives again and you'll find that there's an RRD42 listed and you can pick the image and then say create and now that creates what they call a properties file so now when you look at this ISO you can expand that and it says it'll show up as a DAC RRD42 with 512 byte block size which is what you need so we can attach that to 4 
standard ID for drives. We'll just get rid of this one. And we're ready to go. I might just reattach this one just to so that we can play with a blank disk. So now when I start up the VAC station I should see SCSI ID 0, 1 and 4. I'll see a 24 and I'll see 26 and a CD-ROM drive. Now this also supports configurations up here so that you can save various configurations. So if I like the setup of this I can just say save and then it saves that as a default and then when I load in it'll load that. So if I say detach all the devices which cleans it out but there's nothing there, and then I can say load the default and it brings them back. The default one will, will load on, on boot as well, so you don't have to go into the web interface, you just turn it on and those drives will be there. Okay, we're looking at the back station now. So, have a look at the devices. And as expected, we've got our DKA200, which is a physical drive, and we've got our three RA SCSI drives. So we've got another RZ24 there, 100 which is a RZ26, and 400 which is emulating the RRD42. If we do this again, it may show the size of the CD. Often it doesn't show on the first first command. Yep, now it's showing the size of the CD. So if we think OK, we'll in, do an install. Boot off the CD. Do our standard install. As you can see, it's unpacking onto DKP100. We'll come back to that when it's finished. And there it is. It was quite fast, actually. Because the emulated CD-ROM drive is going to be a lot faster than the real one. Right, we'll just drop out of there and boot off that. So as you can see, it's going to go through the, the whole install. We won't bother with that. I'll just boot off this other one that I prepared earlier. And there are our drives. There's the one we booted off, which is running on RS SCSI. And you wouldn't know that it's not a physical drive. Everything looks like it's real. You can change the, the vendor IDs and stuff like that if you want to make sure that you know that it's an emulated drive. In this case, it looks good. Can have a look at the CD now. Let's see, there's an RD42. So, mount that. It's the right lock because it's a CD. your typical install CD with all your kits. Everything looks good here. 
see the drives, no errors, works well. Now if you want to add a drive while the system's up, like I've just done at the moment, added to, uh, 200, DKB 200, it won't show up because you've got to get it to rescan. So now I've got a shade of D. I've got 200 there now. And this one's just a generic ID, RSCSI disk. It's not emulating a, dec a DEC one. If you remove drives, they won't disappear from there. You've got to reboot the whole system to get rid of any drives that no longer exist. Now, I don't know whether you've noticed, but down here you can actually specify LUN numbers as well as the SCSI ID. The VAC station doesn't support that, but the Alpha does. So you can attach the drive to say, okay, ID 1, LUN 0. Attach that, and then you can say, okay, I'll attach this one as 1, LUN 1. So they're both on ID 1 but there's two different LUNs on the Alpha. They will show up and they will be usable. And one thing I've done to show off this feature is I've got this zip file. Just got 32 10 meg images. So if I say unzip all on that, right, I now have all these image files, all these little 10 meg disks. I've also got a profile called all32, so if I load that, Okay, we've now got 32 drives attached and they're all on LUNs, so this is 1 LUN 0, 1 LUN 1, ID 1 LUN 2 and so on. The Alpha Oni shows maximum of 8 LUNs per ID, so that's why I created these. So if we have a look at the alpha, all those will show up and they're usable individually. All right, over on the alpha now, I've loaded up that configuration with 32 LUNs. And if we have a look here, here's all the drives showing up. So we've got things like DKA 600, 601, 602, 603, so all on ID 6 we've got various LUNs. So let's just, we'll boot off the local hard drive and have a look at them. all our drives. I've written a few command procedures. To handle them. So if I do S mount, it should go through and mount all those drives. As you can see they've all got different labels. So that they're all individual drives. So 
So there you go, lots of drives. 32 drives connected through the RA SCSI. And if I run my S copy procedure, it will copy some files onto onto them. The read procedure just reads it back and gives an error if the files aren't there. That procedure will delete stuff. So there's no files. Okay, so there you've seen the Alpha running with 32 LUNs. Okay, what I've done now is I've got a drive, an RC28 drive mounted, um, attached, sorry, from the RA SCSI and a CD-ROM device. So I'm going to boot off that and then I'll copy um, the physical hard drive to 100. So let's boot that. Okay, do some commands. Yeah, 100 is the disk that we want to write to. And we're going to have to because zero is so large, I'm going to have to play around with the cluster size just to get this thing to work properly. So we'll mount that, which is our source disk. Destination disk foreign. And don't initialize. Okay, it's off and running. We'll let that go for a while and come back. Okay, so it's done. So, just dismount our drives. Yeah, drop the console there. So now we should be able to boot off 100. Okay, so there it is. We've booted our alpha system off an RA SCSI connected image. It's slower than the than the hard drive, but that's to be expected. It's a fairly fast hard drive in this machine. So there you have it. We've um, tested RA SCSI on both the VAC station and the alpha, and it works fine. Boot off the drives, you can boot CDs, do all sorts of things. On the Alpha you can do even do tricks like multi-LUN support. One thing that you should be aware of though is that you should always detach your devices when you're finished, like this, or shut down the Raspberry Pi properly using this one here. 
if you just flick the power switch on it, you can end up corrupting your images. And yeah, that's not good. But if you power it down nicely through the proper shutdown procedure, then everything should be good. As you can tell, our race cars use a great test platform. You can have all your operating system images zipped up here like I've got. Um, you can have multiple hard drive images sitting on there. They even zip them up as well and just load the one you want at the appropriate time. Thoroughly recommended. Anyway, that's it from me. Hope you found that interesting and we'll catch up with you next time.